Welcome to one more day at this beautiful Phoenix Rising Summit. Um, lots more masterclasses on store for us today, tomorrow. If you've missed any of them, go back and watch the replay. They're all there available for you. Uh, still going on, so it's been very exciting. We've talked about all sorts of different subjects, movement, breath, spirituality, uh, magnetism. Oh my God. Um, so, so excited. And I, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for spending some time with me. Uh, my name is Claudia Milborn. I am the founder and principal naturopath at Peony Flora Clinic. So here at Peony Flora, we see clients face to face and also online. I serve people all over Brisbane and internationally and all over Australia. So it is incredible to reach so many people in this virtual world now and we're here today. So let's bring it on, right? So what are we doing today here? <laughs> I want to bring in a lot of different aspects of what we've been talking about and integrate on what I do most days in clinics. So my passion and my purpose here is to help women um, through their health journey, through hormonal balancing to reach a better state and um, their goals ultimately in terms of health and mind-body connection and, and interaction with their lives and their environment. So we're looking at not only getting better physically, but along the process, educating, understanding more, and hopefully we'll do a little bit of that today. Um, say hi, let us know where you're coming from. Uh, if you're watching on replay, put a hashtag replay there. I'll be watching the comments and responding. If you have any questions, reach out to me. You can find me on my website at www.peonyflora.com. I'll put the comments down later. I am also on Instagram and Facebook under the same day um, in the same, you know, name. So it's pretty easy. Peony Flora everywhere. Hey, Christy, thanks for joining me and for everybody else here today as well. Um, so let's get started. Um, what I want to talk about here is a little bit um, of where I ended up at this point in my journey myself. So if you've read parts of the book or different chapters that we've been um, discussing through the last you know, few days here, um, my contribution to the book was telling my story about how I went full circle and took a very, very long path to find my purpose and my passion and reconnect with that. And I'm very grateful I can do this every day. I feel very blessed that I can be in communities of collaboration of women like this, and also in a very, very therapeutic safe space with my clients. So we work in consultation and we work in master classes and workshops and all sorts of collaborative events. So I wanna bring um, a topic to the forefront, which is women's health. And it is so, so important that we understand what is happening with our bodies and what can we do about it. And a lot of women are walking around really confused, really troubled, finding that their bodies are not behaving the way they expect them to, feeling like they're working against their bodies and their bodies are working against them. And they really don't know who to talk to and what to do. So. We want you to go back into the driver's seat of your health. Um, there is no shortcut, unfortunately. I'd love to say that there is no magic pill. I don't have a cauldron here. I don't have a magic potion. I do have a lot of potions back there, but they are not magical. They do their job. And I've got to work with you and you got to do your part. So there are two main parts to women's involvement in this journey from you know your side of the perspective and the first one is being proactive and looking for your support network looking for the right health professionals to advise you so getting back on the driver's seat doesn't happen uh, without any effort it doesn't fall on your lap and it doesn't happen without you doing anything so the first step is reaching out connecting looking for people to help you, looking for information. And that's what we're doing here. 
And uh, that's what I do when I connect with people and I find people to come to me. And the first thing I say is good on you for taking that responsibility for saying, this is not good enough for me. I want more. So it starts with you and then we carry on together and with other professionals, many, many of the women here in this group and doing talks can be part of your support network and your professional network, skilled in many, many different areas, depending on what you need at any point in time. And then the second part is actually having a proactive role on how you're gonna drive your treatment course, how are you gonna drive your path and also <laughs> compliance. So expecting somebody to give you a solution that is gonna work out without you doing anything actually doesn't work. So being active, being present and constant. So it is very, very hard work. It's constant work, but the benefits are endless. And the more benefits we reap, the better we feel, the more empowered we feel. So we're looking for empowerment here and opening the conversation about taboo subjects, about women's health, hormones, and how to better connect with this and how to better understand them. So one interesting thing I want to talk about is, is um, a timeline in a woman's life and a timeline of how hormones... Sorry, I think it just paused for a second for bad connection. Hopefully we're back on. Um, give me a thumbs up if you can continue here following with me and everything's okay. Hopefully the internet won't drop. So what are we doing? Um, thinking about life uh, patterns and hormonal you know, journeys from childhood to elderly. And the way I see it is like, you know, if you think of, you know, an upwards curve and then there's a peak on that curve and then a smoothing down. So that's really how our life flows in terms of women's health and hormones from my understanding. And it's really easy to explain it that way. So if you think of, you know, a young child, a girl, um, with her levels of hormones and her happy life, what's happening there? Well, they are slightly low, but they're balanced. There's no problem in having low hormones there. They're, they're really, really having a thriving, happy life. So low hormones is not a problem. It's where are they balanced to the stage in life that you are at? So there's a lot of misconception here with levels of hormones and we're going to clarify that and myth bust a bit that low hormones don't necessarily mean you need replacement. So replacement has its place and I'm a great advocate of that for women that need it, but not just assume my hormones are low. I think this is happening. I need to replace them. I need to top them up because you don't top it up for a child. So it doesn't mean you need to top them up at a later stage in life either. You are perfectly capable of navigating through life, getting through your later stages with low hormones, but balanced and a very happy, thriving life. So don't be scared of perimenopause, menopause. There is help out there. If there's anything in balance to balance them, the key is balance. Having them high or low is not the issue. It's just adjusting them to the stage in life that you are at. So there's a lot of understanding that needs to come there and media, and you know all sorts of public information can be very confusing at that stage so you know the child starts with lower hormones you go through puberty which is a bit of a bumpy ride as they're getting adjusted and you know it's like you know you're learning how to drive a car you know you need to do your hundred hours you need to figure out how to get that car running and then you won't forget how to do it anymore or riding a bicycle but in the beginning it's a bit bumpy right so that's your body trying to make hormones and trying to learn how to make them. You don't automatically have your first period and then it's perfect from then on and your body knows absolutely how to do it every single month. It's going to have to learn. So that first bumpy stage of transition between you know childhood, low balanced hormones to a bumpy ride can throw a lot of people off. And young girls, mothers of young girls start seeing that happen. You know, she got a period, she's got a lot of pain, or it's irregular, or it's heavy. And then what happens? Interference happens. So the oral contraceptive pill comes in a lot of times 
with the misconception that it will regulate your periods. It will give you a false impression that it's regulated because it's chemically driven, but it's not doing anything for you. So the pill has its place as well. There are a lot of situations where it can be very useful and, and very helpful medically, but apart from preventing a pregnancy, the contraception methods you use most of the time will not be helping you hormonally. So there's gotta be an understanding of that. And there's no judgment in whatever choice you make. So it's really, really important that that is made clear. Whatever choice the woman makes, it's absolutely her choice and power to you to make that choice. But you should be making that choice from an informed decision. So when I talk to my clients about different contraceptive methods going off or on or what are you doing, it's not judging what you ultimately choose, but I would like women to make a choice knowing this is what's happening, this is the consequence of what I'm doing, how can I mitigate that consequence? So this is really, really important to know and it's not discussed enough, prescriptions are passed out, People are taking medications without knowing what they're taking, what for, how long, what are the consequences of that. And then they deal with that 20, 30 years later when they decide to stop it. So let's open up this conversation. Ask about it. Talk to your doctor. Talk to your health professional. Look for a nutritionist. Look for a naturopath. Look for an allied health professional who is understanding of women's health and women's hormones. So, you know, you go through this stage of bumpy ride and everything time needs to be of essence time needs to be present so that this ride then becomes smoother right and then at that point what happens is in the middle of your you know what we call a fertile time in your life when you know your period has regulated sort of and then you've got your you know years where you can actually conceive until things start changing a little bit that's like kind of the peak of your curve and during that time, there's a lot of balance that needs to be present between your hormones that are fluctuating during your cycle. And if they aren't for whatever reason, there's a lot of reasons that can interfere with that. Medications, stress, um, environmental um, elements, nutritional aspects, um, body weight, metabolism, your thyroid, and many, many others all are playing there so understanding how things can interfere and with each other and how things can support you is very very good as well so you got this you know bump on the curves so if you started low had a bumpy ride you're here at a balance what happens later is you know a decline but that decline is not a bad thing here's another myth to bust uh, that decline is just a natural curse of life so the same way you go up you slow down and it's not a problem there but a lot of women are scared of perimenopause a lot of women are scared of menopause so first of all let's break down that perimenopause and menopause are two different stages so they're not the same thing they function you know alongside each other but they are very very different so they should be treated differently and that's something that we see a lot in discussions where people think, oh, I'm in menopause. That's just one big package, and it really isn't. So let's talk about that, and what does this mean? So around 35 to 40 years of age, your hormones start shifting. So it can happen as early as that, and it can go as long as about 10 to 12 years. It's not always bad, it's not always bumpy, but it's just something to be aware of. Your body is going through a big hormonal shift. So during that shift, it's kind of like the opposite end of that puberty side where you had a little bit of a bumpy ride developing the knowledge to produce hormones. On the other end, we're going to have a little bit of a bumpy ride as the hormones are dropping. So they don't have a slow decline and it's not all low estrogen, I need replacement therapy again. There is a roller coaster ride of estrogen going up and down. And we're gonna get into more detail of what happens with the hormones there, but just wanted to clarify that perimenopause is your second puberty. It is the opposite end of your young age puberty. And during that stage, 
very similar things can happen. Periods can get heavier, periods can get shorter, periods can get longer, breasts can get tender, you can get fluid retention, metabolism dysfunction, and all of that can be balanced out. It's just a matter of finding the right care, finding the right tests to check what level are you at and what kind of help you need and what we can put it in there. So then going through this roller coaster ride with support can be a beautiful journey. A lot of women experience a lot of liberation, a lot of reconnecting with their body, a lot of being ready to take care of themselves and take control. So I love working in this space, in this stage in life. And it's absolutely beautiful when women start reconnecting, you know, and that comes a lot of that embodiment side of things of, you know, mind, body, wellness, listening to your body, making peace with your body, making peace with your hormones, understanding why they're helpful for you, making peace with your period or lack of, and, you know, being grateful for what they're doing for you in life. So pass through this roller coaster ride where your hormones are going up and down, then they actually settle at a lower level. And that's the difference between perimenopause and menopause. Menopause is not a roller coaster ride and it's not all low. It's just they are lower than during your menstruating years where they have to create an ovulation and a cycle. But it's just like as healthy as the girl that was in the beginning of life. So you can have low hormones in your menopause years but balance low hormones. And that means you're gonna have a thriving, happy, very healthy life. And that's what we wanna strive for. So levels up or down don't necessarily mean everything. It's just where are they at for your stage in life and how balanced they are with each other. So that is really, really interesting to talk about. Um, got some comments coming through as I read them. We'll be able to have little bits of chats. Um, yeah, Goldie, <laughs> ready for the roller coaster. It is a ride and it's an interesting one. Really exciting. I'd suggest you find somebody to support you and um, get on this journey together because it can be absolute bliss as you take power and you feel better. Um, who else? Aileen, um, started PMS when I was 40 years old. My children were telling me I had such a small heart because I was too emotional and sensitive. That's true. It can happen, but it's understanding why, where, and when you're at. So I'll talk a little bit about that to, to you guys in a minute. Um, what the hormones do to us and how can we make peace with them? Um, so going back to you know this summary of this journey so you know think about this up and down flow of hormones through life that's a pretty easy way to to summarize it so yeah let's get into the cycle itself and and, and the main hormones we we process and metabolize and produce in our bodies as women and if you think of you know a, a um, menstruating period where you've got your whole cycle from day one being the day you bleed until the last day, which is the day before the la next bleed cycle. Um, what we you know, wanna think about and understand there is that the main event of the women's monthly menstrual cycle without interference of hormones or contraception and everything, just saying a clean, plain, you know, natural cycle the main event is ovulation itself which should happen around the middle of that cycle not the menstrual days we focus a lot on the period itself oh my period is heavy oh my period is painful oh, i get pms before or after um yes a lot of things can happen there but that's just a consequence of what happened all through the rest of the month so when we're talking hormonal balancing and we're talking herbs and nutrients and diet and lifestyle that are going to support you through this stage, we look at each period of this menstrual cycle and what is needed at each stage to support the hormone production at a right level for that period. So ovulation in the middle is really the main event. 
and most of the hormones that you're producing there are supporting ovulation, are trying to get that ovulation to happen because really your body wants to get pregnant every month. <laughs> it wants to produce an egg. It wants to produce an environment that is susceptible for that egg to implant and then a pregnancy to occur. And if it doesn't, the menstruation is just a consequence of that pregnancy not happening. So going back to the beginning of this, you know, cycle, what, what is interesting to think about there is that in the first half of the cycle, before the ovulation is supposed to occur, the main uh, hormone present there is estrogen. And estrogen is a hormone of growth. So what estrogen is going to do in that menstrual cycle, of course, estrogen has, has other roles in the body. And um, the hormones we're talking about don't just play a role in the cycle. They're important all over the place. But for these purposes at the moment, we're going to talk about the cycle itself. So estrogen is higher at the first part of the, the cycle. It's trying to deposit tissue in, the, in, in your endometrium, which is the internal lining of the uterus. It's going to make that grow, get plump vascularize get a lot of circulation there and get that ready for a potential pregnancy if that egg that pops out at ovulation gets fertilized it needs to have a place to implant so think estrogen's higher in the first half ovulation happens in the middle when ovulation happens then your progesterone which is the second hormone that plays a key role in this cycle and it balances out estrogen levels as a like a seesaw dance of you know really being connected with each other then progesterone has a role there to play and progesterone is pretty much flatlined in the first part of the cycle when ovulation happens then it peaks and progesterone does this because it only occurs as a consequence of ovulation. When you ovulate, you produce progesterone. If you're not ovulating, you're not producing progesterone. So the, the pill that stops ovulation will stop your ovulation production. And there are other reasons why you might not be ovulating as well. So looking at levels, and that can be tested through blood tests, saliva, urine tests. There are different ways to test hormones at different times in the cycle. It's really important to time hormonal testing because as you can see, they fluctuate over the month. And if you don't know when you're testing or why you're testing at a certain time, there really isn't a point. So when you test and you test with a health professional, you need to know when and why you're doing that. So estrogen goes up and down and then progesterone goes up. What does progesterone do? So in the menstrual cycle, it holds the lining of that uterus that estrogen deposited. So the whole of progesterone is hold that and wait and let's see if the pregnancy occurs. If it occurs, it's going to carry on producing progesterone until placenta takes over. If not, it's going to drop and you're going to menstruate. Now, what happens when hormones become imbalanced? So when hormones become imbalanced, what can happen with estrogen is it can peak and have drops that are severe, that can cause breast tenderness, that can cause headaches, that can cause migraines. Those are just some of the symptoms you may be feeling. Another thing is if it's well above the level that it should be, you can be experiencing issues with more inflammation in your body, more issues with metabolism and weight management because estrogen deposits fat and fat cells produce more estrogen. So you get into a really interesting cycle there. Apart from that, um, you can have issues with detoxification of estrogen that has been utilized and needs to be eliminated from the body. So in that case, we might need to work on the liver and get that metabolism and detoxification working well. So you're not throwing junk back in and recirculating. You want your hormones to be produced beautifully, used, and then dispatched out for a new batch to come through. So this, this is, you know, estrogen and it's ups and downs so imagine um you know in the cycle if it's going up and then regulating down through the second half during perimenopause 
if estrogen is going up and down on a mad roller coaster ride, that's where a lot of women have a lot of uncomfortable symptoms. And there is really no way to completely turn this off, but we can really, really uh, support you in reducing the peaks and troughs of this roller coaster ride and attenuating a lot of symptoms and supporting, um, you know, clearance of many of them as well. So, what about progesterone? <laughs> that is a big one because that's one that we pretty much turn off very often um, and don't really know that that's happening or don't understand the consequences of that. And when you switch off progesterone by switching off ovulation or not supporting it to happen, what's gonna happen is that one, it's not gonna be there to balance out the estrogen. So you're gonna be in a state of estrogen dominance or unopposed estrogen, and that can cause some consequences to you not feeling so fantastic. And the second is that progesterone is our natural um, diuretic, so it's gonna release a lot of fluid retention when it happens. So you need ovulation for that to happen. It's also a natural anti-anxiety um, hormone, and it also is sedating, so it can impact a lot of mood fluctuations. It can impact sleep, so cause sleep disturbances or not support your sleep. So that's why, you know, PMS can happen there near um, menstruation because that's when your hormones drop for the bleed to occur. And during that drop, you can feel a lot of this shift. So we can support you in that curve being a bit smoother. Um, what else are we looking at? So these are just the two main halves and two main hormones in the cycle itself. But women have many more hormones in the body and men do too, but in different levels and, and different reasons. And when we test hormones, when we're thinking of hormones and looking at them, we're also thinking about adrenal hormones. That's cortisol, adrenaline. Those will be produced as a result of stress response and they will affect the production and the conversion of our natural sex hormones, which are estrogen, progesterone, and, and to some degree, testosterone. So managing your stress levels, managing support for your adrenal glands when you're in constant chronic states of stress or busyness. It doesn't have to be one stressful event, but living busy, stressful lives can put a toll on our hormonal flow because as cortisol and adrenaline rise, then they're going to impact how the other hormones are functioning as well. Um, there's a lot of them circulating around. There's a lot of them being converted and how this cascade happens um, can impact how women are feeling or men as well, but we're talking about women here today and, and female hormones. So it's important to have a, a think about what's happening with your adrenal glands and your adrenal hormones. Another really important one is the thyroid. The thyroid is this butter shaped you know, gland that sits right here in front of your trachea and it's got many, many roles. It produces mainly thyroid hormone, which then is gonna circulate in the body. And there are receptors for thyroid hormones in all cells in our body. And it balances everything in relation to regulation. So temperature, metabolism, uh, bowel movements, and you know, intestinal flow and clearance, lots and lots and lots of things that have to be very, very well tuned up or down, the thyroid will have a role in that. So if your thyroid's being impacted, if you have a history of thyroid issues in your family or your thyroid struggling to cope with your busy life or not having enough basis to produce hormones, so what nutrients are needed and what herbs can support you in that you know, functioning can be really, really important. So looking at thyroid should not be, you know, uh, forgotten. And testosterone and androgens. So women have male hormones in very, very small amounts, but when we have too much of them, that can cause some hormonal imbalances and problems. So polycystic ovarian syndrome is a condition that is qualified and, and very um, um, directed towards excess of male hormones in the female body. So that needs to be adjusted as well. Um, you can start having male pattern baldness. You can start growing hair on your face called hirsutism. 
Um, you can start developing acne around this area of your face that's very, very hormonal based and very, very related to excess androgens. And you might have some problems with metabolizing sugar and uh, carbohydrates and uh, balancing um, metabolism in general. So look at cravings and look at, you know, issues with weight management and so not. Um, mentioned a little bit before about testing. If you're looking at testing hormones, make sure you know uh, what test is most appropriate for you and when to test during the month and the tests will be very helpful in addition to case taking, knowing your history, knowing exactly what's happening with you and physical examination. The tests will come in as one more piece of this puzzle. So working with health, health is really a bit of a detective work, you know, into the body and trying to figure out what's happening. What do we know? What do they think is going on? What is affecting what? And really it's important to look at the person as a whole and not just look at a symptom, but who is this person with this symptom and how do we support this person, you know, in a holistic way, not being completely woo woo, but looking at the whole person. So that's, that's something I'm really, really passionate about and would like more people and more clients and, and more women to talk about and um, uh, just, you know, bring this discussion to play. Um, what else do you want to talk about? Um, oh, um, how do you understand all this better, right? Apart from looking for information, having the discussions, um, first of all, um, make sure you know your body and you're comfortable with it. A lot of women I see and talk to in daily life in clinic are not well aware of their basic anatomy. So yes, it's a taboo subject, but there's nothing wrong with you knowing your body and understanding what it feels like where and what the different parts are. So if you're confused about body parts, names, function, get some information about that. So that's one thing, know your body, know what it looks like, know how it feels and know what it's for. And you know, the function of these parts of your body, they don't, they're not there for no reason. They're all, they're playing a role in your health, in your well-being, in your pleasure and in enjoying life every day. Um, what else? Apart from that, track symptoms and, and you know, signs. So there are a lot of, apps out there there are a lot of sheets you know i work with a form that we fill out that you know tracks your symptoms and your cycle so start paying attention start writing things down start tracking them because knowing what's happening when will help you manage how to look after some support and how to correct and adjust certain things just trying to read some comments at the same time Yeah, Goldie, I'll go through the comments in detail later and now I'll, I'll respond to your question. Yeah, hormones getting checked is important, but we need to know what hormones we're checking at what point in your you know, life, if you have a cycle or if you don't, there are different ways to test them. So we, we can get into more detail on uh, what to do. But yes, uh, checking hormones is, is pretty important if you have the means to do it. And it will depend on what country you're in, and uh, what medical system you have, what resources you have available to you. And I'm happy to, to respond to any further questions. Uh, contact me privately and we can um, get a discussion going. I'm, I'm really um, available for, for some extra support. So get to know your body, get to know your cycle, get to know your hormones, make friends with them. So, um, you know, they're not, all problematic you know women have this um very negative uh modern connection with their bodies and their hormones and their cycles so you know if you think of ancient cultures um women were revered you know the, the first period was revered there was a ceremony around it you know the wiser women uh, you know had a position you know and a role in society of of, of guidance of um 
support in their communities. And now we have a very, very disturbed relationship with not wanting to have a bleed, not wanting to have a period, not wanting to feel our hormones. And it's not doing us any service. It's really actually doing us a disservice because we're totally disconnected from what's happening and we're just stopping things from happening, interfering with them and wanting them to go away. <laughs> and <laughs> women are powerful. Women have a lot going on every day in their lives and through the month, but that's where, you know, we get a lot of our power. So it's important to think about um, when you make peace with your hormone fluctuations and, and, you know, you stop thinking you're crazy or you stop thinking you should stop doing that or getting emotional like we talked about. Uh, that is a beauty, that is a blessing to be able to feel all the feels, to be so connected in the world at those times. But, you know, we, we can try to time our life events with our hormonal events. And when that happens and we're able to slowly reconnect with this capability, then all sorts of magic starts happening for you. So just an example, you know, if we think of the different hormonal fluctuations and the different periods in your life where, you know, they go up and they go down, it's kind of like the seasons. So if you think that, you know, there are times when you know you're aligned with the moon or you're aligned with menstruation and you just want to be more you know at home and you want to be more quiet and you just want to stay in your pjs all day and sorry i think my connection dropped for a minute but we are back on and let's back on on a, a quick conversation to wrap up so what we want to talk about here is just as a you know um, finalizing point is thinking about um, the hormonal fluctuation that season. So make peace with that, make friends with that. And if you think that when you're low and you're needing that introverted time and you're needing that space, that's kind of like your winter. So honor that. Give your body that time, give your body that space, if you can, of course. Sometimes we have to go to an event or we have to go to a work meeting or we have to perform. But I'd say anywhere you have space and room in your life to time events and things or adjust your appointments and reschedule them or book something on the whim when you're you know, in a different mood, you're gonna notice that the more you honor your needs, the better off you are at the opposite end of the spectrum. So if when you need some quiet time, you're able to give yourself that quiet time and make peace and don't think there's anything wrong with you because you're a bit emotional or you're a bit, you know, introverted during that time, spend that time and honor that space, like fill that cup of needing that nourishment and that space. What's going to happen is on the opposite end of the spectrum, during your summer, during your ovulation time, when you're expansive and you're, you're communicative, you want to relate to people, you want to connect, that's when you're going to be very, very magnetic and you're going to be very um, powerful and very attractive. And um, it's just natural evolution because that's the time when, you know, you would be wanting to um, procreate and, and conceive. So use that space, use that time to get out there. You know, if you have a very important meeting to go to or a presentation to give that's going to change your life in your career, time that with your ovulation or, you know, that time in, in um, the moon cycle, if you don't have a bleed per se at the moment, that will give you that energetic feel. So honor your downs, you're gonna need that nourishment and honor your highs and really take advantage of that and drive your power, drive you know, that magnetic um, space you have there. Um, yeah, well, I think that's, you know, a little bit of a crash course in hormone fluctuations, hormone health. Um, just in summary, um, what I wanted to bring to you is Bust the mates. If you have questions, ask them. There is nothing wrong with asking questions. If you don't know something, somebody else doesn't know it as well. 
And there's something out there, somebody out there that has that answer for you. So reach out, connect. I'm available here. This talk will be around for a while. You know, I'll be responding to comments. Reach out to me, connect with me in my community. As I said in the beginning, I'll post the, the comments below, but I'm Claudia. I am the founder and principal naturopath at Peony Flora Women's Health Clinic. I work online, worldwide, and face-to-face -face in Brisbane. I have a website with a lot of information there, blogs, and you know, talking a little bit about me, how consultations work. Um, it's peonyflora.com. And I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well as Peony Flora. If you want further connection, further information, send me a message. Um, I do 15 minute free discovery calls. If you'd like to know more about you know, what I do, how I can help you, and if what's going on with you and what's bothering you can be helped, reach out. I'm happy to speak with you. Book a discovery call anytime. And I'm also working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, individual consultations and packages. So we've got a three month, four month journey and like a six to seven month health journey, like to kickstart your health and reboot your health so that you can get to where you wanna get. So the goal and the purpose here is to educate and inform you so that you know way more about yourself, your body, and you're connected with that knowledge and put you on the driver's seat of driving your health. And that means driver's seat of doing the actions, but also the driver's seat of directing where you wanna go, who you wanna involve in your team, and who you wanna work with to support you. So you have the right to live the life you are meant to live. And if you're not doing that right now, there's help out there, reach out. And connect with all the beautiful women speaking today at the rest of the summit. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something new. I hope you've reminded yourself of something new and that there's a little bit of a spark happening there um, for us to do some more. Have fun and I hope you enjoy the rest of the talks.